people when they start a new online business get a shiny new website that they either spend a lot of money to have someone design for them or they take a lot of time to learn how to build themselves. And at the beginning, everything's great and fresh and exciting and maybe you buy some paid traffic from Instagram or Facebook and things are going really good. You're making sales and it's incredible. But then over time, let's say six months down the road, the website doesn't feel quite as fresh anymore and people aren't responding to it in the same way. And then a year has gone by and, well, maybe traffic is starting to dip a quite a bit and it's starting to cost more to get every single customer. And 18 months later, you hate looking at your website because it's just the same old thing day after day. Now, what if I told you there was a process that you should put into place from day one in your business? And if you haven't done it yet, it's okay. You can still do it right now. That will make sure that your business grows over time rather than declines. And typically what happens is things just get so bad that you eventually need to get a new website every two or three years. But if you do this thing that I'm talking about, you can go a lot longer before completely refreshing your website. And the thing I'm talking about is called conversion rate optimization or CRO. And it's a strategy, a methodology that you can run every single quarter in your business to make sure that you're getting the most out of your most valuable asset, your top salesperson, that's your website. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you all about conversion rate optimization, but I'm also going to let you in on a secret that you can get some conversion rate optimization software as a lifetime deal. That means you pay for it once and you get to use it to optimize your website forever. And I'm gonna tell you all about it coming up right now. What's up, LTD addicts? Today, we are talking about true conversion, which is part of AppSumo's Black Friday 2023 extravaganza. Welcome to AppSumo. Now, AppSumo is paying me to put on this video for you, but I could not be more excited to talk about conversion rate optimization to you, growing your business, and teaching you how to use this tool because we're about to dig in and grow your business as big as it can possibly be. This is the True Conversion website, and I'll drop the link down below so you can grab that lifetime deal. Once again, thanks to AppSumo for making this video possible. Now, True Conversion is not just one tool. It's actually an entire suite of tools designed to help you do conversion rate optimization. Now, I'm going to get into each one of these. You can see their little icons down here. I'm going to show you how to use them and what they look like inside of this software so you can see if it would be a good fit for you, and we'll do that in a second. But first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about what conversion rate optimization is. And I'm going to keep this super short. It's just like if I don't do this, it's like just throwing you a tool belt and saying, hey, build me a house. It's it's too complex, too, too weird to do without any context. So we'll do conversion rate optimization in two minutes. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to make this bold so you don't fall asleep. Don't click away and go to the Mr. Beast video that just came out. I'm sure it's really interesting. He's either giving people a lot of money or saving people's lives, both very commendable. But we are talking about conversion rate optimization. And step one is goal identification. You do not need software for this. You need to know what you want to achieve with your website. Am I trying to get more newsletter signups? Am I trying to make more overall sales? Is there a specific product that is not selling as well as we think it should? How can we improve this scenario? We're not actually even getting to that point yet. We're just identifying the problem. We don't care about what we're going to do about it. We just say, hey, this is what we want to fix. Goals in this scenario need to be SMART goals. If you're not familiar with that terminology, go ahead and Google it. Pause the video right now and Google it. SMART goals are something that is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant to what you're trying to achieve, and time-bound. Time-bound is right. We need to keep that into mind. We're going to be repeating this process over and over again. So our conversion rate optimization might be like three months long, and you just do it four times per year, and, and that's how you make your website better over time. So goal identification, very important. What do you want to achieve? Then we use the software for data collection and analysis. Now, at this point, we're still not doing what we intuitively want to do, like say, hey, I know the solution to this. Instead, we've said what we want to achieve, and then we're watching people use the website. What is going on? We need to get that information without any bias. How are they using, what is really happening here so that we can actually make a real educated hypothesis, which is coming up in step four, to solve the problem, to achieve the goal that we want. Now, before we get to our hypothesis, don't want to skip anything here, we do user feedback because people will tell you one thing and then also show you something else. So it's important to get both sides of this equation. 
data collection shows you what they do. User feedback tells you what they want or what they think they're trying to do, even if they don't know really what's going on. Not that people are stupid, but sometimes their actions don't align with what they tell you that they want to achieve. All right, so then once we have gotten all of that information together and we have our goal and we see what's going on, at that point, and at that point only, we create our hypothesis. Our hypothesis is an educated guess towards what we think will help us achieve our goal. And then we go ahead and we design a test and do some testing implementation, like saying, hey, I think if we move the opt-in box up here on this page, this would increase our conversion rates for our newsletter. And then we test that and we actually send traffic to that test to find out if it does better. And after that happens, we go ahead and we analyze the results to say, hey, yes, this worked or no, this didn't. And then we can iterate again. So we learn from our results and we go ahead and just repeat the entire process again, trying to achieve something else the next time around. So that is conversion rate optimization. And that is what the tools I'm about to show you can help you do. All right, let's go ahead and jump into my account here, which I've set up for demonstration purposes. Not a lot of data here, but we will have enough data to go through and show you how the tool actually works. So first of all, on the dashboard here, over to the left, we can see each of our tools. They're divided into two categories. The first category is analysis, and the second category is insights. So if we were to pull open our little sheet here, analysis is going to be number two, and insights will be number three. All right, so jumping back to the tool, under analysis, we have Funnels and smart funnels, these are the same thing. Smart funnels is the new version of their funnel product. So we're just going to focus on smart funnels. Then we have heat maps and recordings. I'm going to group those two together. They're basically a way to observe how people are using your website. We also have forms, which is a little bit of an odd duck. I love forms. I love that this is a tool that's included in true conversion. It's not something you see everywhere. But essentially what forms is going to do, and I'll show you in a second, is going to pull in the forms from your website. It's not a form builder. It's going to take the forms that you already have and tell you whether or not they're working. And I'll show you exactly what that means in a minute. But it can do really cool stuff. So we'll see that soon. And then down at the bottom here, the last thing under analysis is visitor journey. And this is basically like kind of general analytics, I guess you could say, like, where are people going on your website? What are they doing? How are they spending their time? So on and so forth. And that's it for analysis. So let's let's dig into analysis and then we'll talk about insights afterwards. So under analysis, our smart funnels is the first option. Now, a smart funnel is a way to measure how people are going through your website and whether or not they're achieving a, an intended goal. So I've got a funnel set up here, which is for a online course to go to the landing page, the sales page, and the thank you page. And I can go ahead and view the report here. Now, there's not very much traffic going to this, but you can see there's been one user who hit the landing page and then they did not go to the checkout page. So, of course, they also did not go to the thank you page. But we get a nice little snapshot of what the page looks like, a cool visual representation. And then down below, we get some metrics. So 100% people actually hit this page, but they also 100% dropped off. So one, one person came here. They did not advance to the next step. So it's a 100% drop off. Now, from this, I could go ahead and create some other tools where I could implement other tools on this page, a heat map, a uh, form analyzer. Now, there's no forms on this page, so that wouldn't make much sense. But I could create recordings or a micro survey uh, so that I could actually do some further analysis to why this page might be underperforming. But uh, for now, we just have the overall bird's eye view of, hey, this page isn't getting people to the next page as well as we wanted. So that's some information that we can then take with us and analyze. Now, what's really cool about this is if I wanted to share this funnel with, say, a client or whoever else is important on this project, I can click this little button right here and I get a share URL. And I can go ahead and turn that share URL on right here with this switch and then just copy and paste this over an email. They don't need to log in or have an account or anything. They can just see the information relevant to this funnel. There's also filtering built in right here. And so I could click on this and then go ahead and filter by specific dates or by specific devices. We can get really granular here and say, hey, why aren't people on mobile using uh, Android converting as well as people that are on desktop using Windows uh, and so on and so forth. And we can, can kind of compare those two uh, different demographics. Now, setting up a smart funnel is super easy. We just click this button up here to create a new funnel. And when you do so, it's going to take you, I'm going to edit this page so you can see what it looks like. It's going to look exactly like this, except there'll be no steps filled in right here. 
So we go ahead, we name our funnel at the top, and then we go through and we add each page on our funnel. So the landing page, the order form, and the thank you page are the steps in this particular funnel, but you could have upsells and bump offers and whatever you want to track. You simply open up, I'm gonna open up this middle page right here because this is kind of where the money happens. Uh, it's the order form page. And then over here on the right-hand sidebar, this is exactly what it looks like when you set it up. You choose the page type. So in this case, I called it the order form page and I give it a name, checkout. So I can choose from a drop down here. Uh, I can't change it at this point, but you could say like home page or um, product page or whatever you want. And then the, the step name is right here. And then we just simply paste in the URL that you're trying to track. And in this case, my goal is to track form submissions. Now, this is an overall checkout page. Let's go ahead and see what this page looks like. All right, so here is the checkout page. And you can see it's nicely designed and everything. It's a two-step checkout. So we can go from step one, which is you know your name and address. And then we go to step two. Step two is where we get the payment. So there's actually two forms on this page. And true conversion, just you put in the URL and it picks right up on that. It found the two different forms. You can see it called it form one and form two. And then it's going to pull in the data from those specific forms so that we can make sure that people are actually filling it out. Now, in this case, when people fill out the form, it means they're buying the product and the product is $39. So I was able to attach a value specifically to this form and we can see how profitable this overall funnel is. You can also set a goal conversion rate for every single step in the funnel. So at this point, I set it to be 10%. Uh, and then as we go back out to the overall funnel, we can set our, our goal for the entire funnel to be something a specific step. So in this case, the only one that really truly matters, the primary goal is that step two I just showed you where someone's actually competing, completing the checkout process. If they don't do that, we don't really care if they make it to step two. It's, you know, making the purchase is the important data. All right, so that is how funnels work and what the reports look like. Let's move along to heat maps. Heat maps are gonna give you a view of the actual website and then wherever people click, you'll start to see a heated outline. And it looks like there's actually not been any heat maps recorded on this particular website. But let's say someone was clicking on this button here, we'd start to see some red around the button and then all of the areas around it, maybe where they'd click less often, could be slightly lighter colors, orange into yellow. Um, so that's how heat maps look. I'm sure you've seen a picture of a heat map before, but we can actually see quite a bit of data here about how things are moving around, where people are clicking, how they are scrolling. We get lots of different information that we can apply to the heat map. So we can learn, are people even scrolling all the way through this sales page? Are they clicking on an item that they think is a button? Maybe they think there should be uh, some, some graphics in here that the heat map doesn't pull in. Maybe they think these are buttons, but they're really not. They're just nice little decorative designs. Uh, so those are things that can give us feedback, say, oh, you know, they're trying to find out more about this, but it's not actually a button. So we need to change our design based on that information. When you create a new heat map, very much like creating a smart funnel, you're going to give it a name. Now, what is different about the heat map is you set a specific number of page views. So in this case, I have it set to 5,000 page views. After 5,000 page views, this campaign will essentially end and the report will be final. So we'll, have, we'll know as much as we're going to know from that initial report. And from there, then, of course, we could do our analysis and create a hypothesis after gathering some user feedback. So uh, that's how the setup process essentially works. We just type in the URL that we want to gather the heat map for, and then it works. It's, it's live and we're good to go. Now, there is some more advanced features. If you have one of the advanced plans, you can set up the heat map to trigger after a specific JavaScript event. That way, you're not gathering data from people who are tire kickers, not really interested in your product. They ended up on there from some other means. Uh, and once people show they're actually interested, maybe they scroll to a certain part of the page or something they've done on the page indicates that these are serious customers, well, then we can start to track them a little bit more closely because we want to make sure those people that are on the edge and are most close to buying are the ones who actually do. So that's a good reason you might want to go above the most basic plan. And I'm kind of wishing I had done as well. So after I record this video, I will probably upgrade my plan. Um, because if I try to en enter anything here, it's going to just tell me that I need to upgrade my plan in order to do so. All right, we are going to move along. We're going to come back to forms in a minute. But first, we're going to go over to recordings. 
and recordings, I'm gonna jump over to another domain actually. I'm gonna go to clientamp.com. This little disclosure triangle up here will let me move to different domains that I have connected to my site. So uh, clientamp.com is my WordPress domain. Just connected this one up. We're gonna go over to recordings right now. I see recordings and heat maps, like I mentioned before, as connected a little bit because they uh, you know, are showing us more user activity on the site very directly. Looks like there's been three recordings done here. Let's go ahead and view these recordings. So I can see, I can click over here to play them, but I can also see their country of origin, what type of device they were on, what browser they were using, lots of information about the user, um, which is quite nice. And then we have that filtering built in like I showed you before. So let's go ahead and watch this user recording. I can see it's gonna be about 23 seconds. I'll hit play and uh, it's gonna go ahead and just start playing here automatically for us. We can see them scrolling through the page, kind of you know flicking on their mobile phone, um, rather big leaps, but not really stopping to read much of anything. They clicked on the button at the top. That took them to the submission, the form submission here, and they just kept on scrolling and said, okay, uh, that's that's good for me, and basically abandoned the page at this, this point. So just like we saw before, I can share this recording right here. Now, I do need to be on a plus plan or higher to do this, as well as tagging recordings. Let's say there's one of high interest like this. Oh, I noticed an error. I could go ahead and tag this, although I'm not on a plus plan, so I can't do that. But uh, that's basically how the recording system works. So if I want to go to the next recording. I would just skip over to it with this button and I can see what was going on here. So we're not going to watch another one, but that is recordings and you can see how that information might be useful. Setting up the recordings is super easy. We just click the blue button up here. I'm going to show you the existing one that we have going. So you can see all the settings. Just like for heat maps, we can choose the number of recordings that we want as well as the page that we want to record. Um, and we can also set those JavaScript triggers if you're on one of the higher end plans so that the recordings only begin uh, under certain circumstances. Okay, now it's time to double back and I'm gonna go over to the forums and show you how this works. Once again, we're gonna look at the report first and then we'll come back and look at the setup. So I'm gonna click on the report here and you can see that only one person has actually hit the form here and they didn't fill out anything. But the information we could see is really, really interesting. So I can see how much time they spend on the fields how many they refilled, how many they left blank, how many characters they typed in. You'll actually be able to see like if they went back and hit delete a lot. So really, really interesting. This one has 100% drop off. So obviously that is not ideal. But when do you ever get to see this type of detailed analytics about your forms? I don't know why form builders don't build this. I guess it's probably too much data to collect. It would bog down your server if you just did this like right on WordPress. Um, but really, really interesting to see, oh, they spent, you know, 36 seconds on, on the fields. That's not very much time or that's a lot of time depending on the size of the form. Sharing, once again, is a plus and above feature. We could filter the reports just like we saw before. You could even download a CSV file of everything that's going on here if you wanted to import it into uh, another program to analyze. All right, now let's jump back and let me show you actually how to set up the form. This time I'm just gonna do it from scratch so you can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go client amp home. We're gonna do that same exact page. I'm just gonna type in clientamp.com. And then I just click the generate form button and it goes out to the website, looks for any forms and then pulls them in. So there's literally no setup process here. You can see it found all of the form fields. Let me look at that page and you can see. So here's the form. It's got three fields, first name, email address, and message. And then back over in true conversion, it just pulled in the forms right here. And I can actually modify these to just be like name, email, and message and turn the activation to on. And there we go. Now I'm analyzing all of the form fills on my website. This could be absolutely huge if you work with a lot of service-based businesses that are doing lead generation. That is their lifeblood. Whether they eat that month depends on getting a certain number of leads. Well, now you can get more data about the forums, whether or not they're difficult to fill out. That could really change a business. This is a very, very cool feature. Um, I think for service-based businesses alone, this is worth the price of admission. All right, the last thing under analysis is called visitor journey. So let's go ahead and open this up. We'll see the data and then I'll show you how to set it up. So here, like I said before, this is kind of like general analytics, just a stream of everything that's going on. We can see everybody who's visited this website, a lot of people from the US, but then quite a few from overseas as well. Um, so just everybody, what they did, I can click on a specific user here and get more information about what they have specifically done on the website. So I'll click view journey. So here's the data about the visitor. I can see when they came to the website, how many times they've been to the website. Um, I get a little map down here of where in the world they're from. 
uh, if they've completed any conversion goals that I could have set up during the setup process, which I did not do, and if they did the value of those goals. Over to the right, I can see very specific information like they happen to be on an Android phone, it looks like, and they visited three pages, and the pages they visited happen to be the ones with these URLs right here. Really nice to know information. Uh, if you're looking at specific users, we need to get a little bit more information in order to make decisions on this, but um, if we knew that they had made purchases, well, then that information gets a lot more interesting, doesn't it? So that's where the filtering is really going to come into play. So back out on the main screen here of the visitor journey, I could go ahead and create a filter for everyone that has a goal value, uh, you know, between one and a hundred dollars, um, and that visited the site between a certain date and we're on a certain browser. Now we can start to gather a lot more interesting information. So the filtering is very, very valuable. Okay, so that is the analysis section. Now let's turn our sites onto the insights where we can actually figure out what our users are saying about us. We've got two options here, micro surveys, which I absolutely love, and surveys, which I love as well, but not as easy to pull off in a good manner as micro surveys. So let me show you how micro surveys work first. I've once again got an example here that I can show you on my website. I've added one to profitable.tools or profitabletools.com under micro surveys, and it's on the ghost sales page. Let's go ahead and check out what this page looks like. All right, so this is the sales page for one of my courses, and you can see that I added in this little micro survey down here at the bottom. And it just says, did you find the information you're looking for? Now I could have this show up, let's say after they scrolled like halfway through the page. Right now it's just showing up right at the beginning, which is not ideal. Um, so let's say I said no, and then I can ask them, uh, you know, what did you come to do? And you know, I wanted to learn more about ghosts. And they hit send. And it says, thank you. So now I know like this was helpful. This wasn't helpful. What were they trying to achieve? Really, really simple. And you can customize that. It doesn't have to be those particular questions, but it's short and sweet and people will actually fill it out versus a very long survey, which can be very useful, but only a certain type of person is going to fill out, let's say a five or six free form survey where they can write as much as they like about your products or services. What they do have to say is very valuable. You want to listen to that but it's a lot harder to get people to fill those types of surveys out. Truth be told, a micro survey and a full survey are really serving different jobs. We're getting a lot of different information out of them, so I'm not trying to choose one over the other, but uh, I do like how these look. Let me show you how to set it up. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this existing one. So we start off by giving the micro survey a name, and then we choose a page for it to be displayed on, and then we choose how often it's displayed. So right now I have it showing up once to each visitor. So if you see it once, you won't see it again until you clear your cookies. I could have it continue to show up until the visitor provides a response, but I feel like that's a little bit annoying. And I could also have it show up even after the visitor has showed a response. So in that case, you might be thinking more of like a help desk type of situation where people can just fill this out if they need uh, some type of a solution. We can choose what types of devices it shows up on, so desktop, tablet, or mobile. Under targeting options, we have a plethora to choose from here. So we can go ahead and target just everybody like I'm doing right now, or you can set up some of these advanced behaviors. Now you might need the pro or plus plan to achieve some of these, but they could be really, really powerful. Now I should mention that a lot of these options are available through the other tools as well. I just didn't cover them. Um, like for example, you can target specific users depending on what sent them to your website. So it could be a UTM parameter or a Facebook ad that could be coming from a specific URL. Like right here, it says visitors coming to your website from, and then it could be a Facebook ad. Now you need, do need to be a pro user to utilize this feature. Um, you could say when visitors have come to at least two different pages on your website, then you show them the micro survey. So really, really powerful conditions to set up here. Like I mentioned, the condition builder is uh, present throughout the different tools. They're not always exactly the same as what you're seeing here, but they are very full featured in terms of targeting uh, recordings or uh, different analytics tools to specific users. I'll talk more about the privacy issues with a tool like this in a moment, but I just want to mention that there is a disclaimer option here. So I can go ahead, click this, and then I can add a little uh, dis disclaimer here to my survey over to the right. I'll, this is the preview, obviously, of what the survey looks like. And then on the right-hand column over here is where we add in our questions. So you can customize this to be whatever you like, yes or no questions, single line answers, whatever you want to do. 
So once you get everything all dialed in, in terms of your targeting and the questions you wanna ask people, you can go ahead and design this. There's a little preview button we can click right here. And it just actually opens up your website where it's gonna live. And then you've got a widget up here to style things. Now you can choose between some previews or presets uh, for different designs here. So I can toggle through them. You can see what it looks like in the lower right hand corner. If I wanted this to be on the left, by the way, I could do that. Now, because I've already published this, they're not letting me move it. They want me to create a new uh, survey, but I can go through the different presets. I do like this first option here at best. And then if you're on the plus or the pro plan, you will be able to hide the logo or even upload your own custom logo. So uh, what I'm getting at here is you really don't want to be on the basic plan like I am. You want to buy more than one code. Uh, this is one of those tools where like if you're going to go for it, I'd say just just go all in. All right, so that is micro surveys. Let's go ahead and turn our sites on actual full-fledged surveys. We'll go ahead and create one from scratch here, and then we can see what it looks like uh, from the beginning to the end. So we'll give this a title, My Customer Happiness Survey. So you can see as I add the title in, it shows up over here on the preview of what the survey is going to look like. We can add a little description in here if we want. We can toggle this off and just go right to the questions. Up to you. We've got our submit button text right here. So we can say submit, send, whatever you like. And then we've got our survey invite message. So what's gonna happen here is that when someone's on a specific page of your website, we can pop open a message and say, hey, would you like to take a survey? This could be really useful. Let's say someone just completed a purchase. We wanna know how that experience was for them. And if they're very excited about the product, they might be more inclined to share a lot of information at that phase. Or maybe they just had a support ticket completed successfully. You can send them an email link to fill out this survey to know how you're doing. Now, truth be told, you could really use any form builder to do this, but now all of your data is going to be in one place in true conversion where you can make all of your analytical decisions. So I do see some benefit to keeping everything kind of inside of this platform. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and have this survey pull open on ProfitableTools.com and I'm gonna leave it only for desktop users. I have some advanced de device settings here as well, so I could have it pop up, let's say, after a few seconds on the page. Again, this is gonna be an upgrade, so I can't actually do this, uh, but then we can also have them you know, show up halfway down the page when they're scrolling. Uh, you know, These are all good options, I think. Uh, just to display it for you on the demo, I'm gonna leave it as instantly. Just like with our micro survey, we have our questions over here on the right, so we can go ahead and fill these out exactly as we want. Uh, it's very easy to delete questions or to add in new ones down here. There's quite a few different question types. We have radio buttons, check boxes, long answers, single line answers, dates, net promoter score. So we can just have them, you know, say, uh, you know, oh, actually there's already one on here. How likely is it that you would, uh, uh, you know, support us or recommend us? And we have our net promoter options in there. Uh, I'll go ahead and delete this one that I just added. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like on the page by customizing the survey design. So it pulls open, I think, kind of an ugly template here, but don't worry, we can change this. So button colors, let's go ahead and add in our hex code here. I'm going to keep this on brand with the uh, button color down there. Change our hover color as well. All right, it's starting to look better. The red text is getting me. I don't know why they defaulted to that. Let's make that more of a black text. All right, now we are not in such bad shape over here. So someone visits the page, they say, hey, would you like to take a survey? They can say, no, thank you, close this out. They won't see it again, or they can hit yes, and then they're taken to a page with the survey. Similar to the micro survey, we can choose the position this shows up on. There's a few different toggle, toggle switches over here. So you can see it's moving around the page. And if I were to upgrade my plan, once again, I can hide the logo or upload my own. Now I'm gonna keep this dead center in the middle of the page and I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the survey form right here where I can see what the actual survey will look like. Now this might not look like much, but it's a survey. It shouldn't look like much. You get people to fill it out. It's nice and clear and simple. I think it'll look really good on mobile. The one thing I would probably do is just make the text a little bigger and I don't really see a way to do that. So that's a bit of a bummer, but other than that, um, I think it looks really, really solid. Uh, you notice that it pulled in my button colors from before, so no need to update the the, uh, the branding there. Um, but overall, yeah, this looks fairly good. We can see our net promoter score. How likely is it that you would recommend? You know, we get a little scale of one to 10. We got a long form answer right here, some radio buttons, and a single line answer up at the top. Now, I would probably not ask this many questions on a full survey. I'd probably limit it more to like four questions, maybe five. Uh, but, you know, you can do as many as you want. So if you want to have people answer questions all day, you can do that as well.
So that is surveys. That's how you set them up. That's what they look like. Let's move along over to the gear icon in the upper right hand corner. We are almost done with this video. I'm going to show you a few of the important settings. First thing I might uh, encourage you to do is go ahead and exclude your IP. So you can go over here and just say add an IP address or add my IP address and then you will not be tracked in the analytics which could be quite helpful so you don't skew the numbers and you can actually have everybody on your team go ahead and report their IP address over here. Of course, we can also set up notifications if you want to get reminders about uh, daily, weekly reports. Those types of things are available. I'm not going to turn those on right now. I can go over to integrations and I can add integrations with particular tools right here. So we've got things like MailChimp, um, but there's a lot of different tools built in here. Drip, Active Campaign, Zapier, all of the good stuff is built right in. But the one thing I have not showed you so far, and it's very important because this stuff does not work on magic, is how do you actually connect the domains up? Well, when you add a new domain, and you remember I showed you the drop down here, I can add a new website right here, and I just type in the URL that I want. Once I do that, I get a tracking code that I put up on my website. Like you can see right here, it says tracking code installed. If I click on that, it shows me the tracking code again, and I can just verify that it's actually installed. Now you can just put this right on where you put your Google Analytics code, that is totally fine. They also have a free plugin that they call True Conversion Connect. You can just find it under the WordPress plugins, go ahead and download that and it'll just connect right away. You don't even have to copy and paste the code. Uh, if I hit verify installation here, it's gonna pop open a, a page and just show me, all right, yep, you're verified. The one bit of advice I would have is to make sure that you clear your cache after you add in the tracking code, make sure that cache gets cleared. I actually did that and then I didn't get any data. So I cleared it again and then it finally worked. So sometimes the cache, it just sticks around a little bit longer than you expect. So clear the cache, confirm that it's actually tracking data um, and then you can, you know, just let it be. You don't have to hover over this stuff. You wanna let it gather the data naturally. So that is true conversion and that is conversion rate optimization, something that you need to start learning about a little bit right now. You don't have to be a master, but just start doing it. And like anything else, the more you do it, the more it'll start to make sense and you'll improve and you'll make more money. And that is the goal. Thank you for watching. I am Dave Swift. You can check out the link for true conversion down below in the description. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be hanging out in the comments. Have a great Black Friday. Have a great Thanksgiving week if you're in the US and I will see you in the next video.